the expert appraisal committee eac of the ministry of environment forest and climate change for appraisal of industry three sector projects in its 48th meeting deliberated on an application seeking clarification of applicability of eia notification 2006 on green hydrogen and green ammonia projects the eac under the chairmanship of professor dr ab pandit has stated that there are several issues which need to be carefully considered when assessing the environmental impact of green hydrogen and green ammonia projects discussing the hazards of green ammonia the eac has cautioned that the hazards associated with green ammonia may not be significantly different from those of black or gray ammonia therefore it is important to carefully assess the risks associated with the production and handling of green ammonia deliberating on ammonia as a fertilizer the eac also remarked that it is incorrect to state that ammonia is not a fertilizer ammonia is also a fertilizer except that its use requires adequate precautions due to its toxic nature taking note of green ammonia export the expert committee has raised concerns about the carbon footprint associated with the export of green ammonia it suggests that it may be more environmentally friendly to produce green ammonia locally and use it within the country rather than exporting it to a distant location or distant locations perorating on the technology aspects the expert committee stated that there are several technological limitations to the production of green hydrogen and green ammonia that need to be carefully considered for example the availability of solar or wind power may be limited by weather conditions and grid power from thermal power plant may be required as a backup additionally there is currently no indigenous capability for making electrolyzers and membranes used in electrolyzers are patented items the eco point that to properly assess the environmental impact of the green hydrogen and green ammonia projects it is important to conduct a detailed analysis of various aspects such as techno economic feasibility raw materials material balancing water balance energy consumption possible environmental and hazard issues and carbon footprint further it was said considering the impact on the sea microbiota and other species and since seawater too will not be conditioned to make it treatable for electrolyzer uses of treated wastewater as a feed shall be examined the life cycle analysis of projects are also required the eac has sought several of various pertinent information and uh, documents uh, for for the deliberations the eac for industry 3 sector projects recommended the amendment of ec dated 21st april 2022 as sought by NACL Industries Limited, which involves effluent disposal of high dis, uh, tedious, high total dissolved solids. Despite the fact that the establishment of common effluent treatment plant in Andhra Pradesh Industrial Infrastructure Corporation at Ranasthalam in Srikakulam district, Andhra Pradesh is still not complete. The EC was given for expansion of agrochemicals manufacturing unit from 30 tpd to 70.1 tpd and inclusion of bio based agrochemicals and captive cogeneration power plant of 6 megawatt in arinama akkivalasa village etchirla mandal srikakulam district of andhra pradesh the total water requirement remains unchanged at 2340 cubic meter per day however after the EC amendment, fresh water intake will increase from 1,075 cubic meter to 1,245 cubic meter, while the recycled water goes down from 1,265 cubic meter to 1,095 cubic meter per day. The fresh water requirement is to be sourced from groundwater or from Nagavali River. Further. The previous EC condition, total effluent of 1372 cubic meter per day will be treated through zero liquid discharge based effluent treatment system. The treated wastewater is reused for process washings, scrubbers, circulation, 
and cooling tower makeup is now going to be total effluent generation is 1372 KLD out of which 1202 KLD will be treated through JLD. The treated wastewater is reused for washings, scrub circulation and cooling towers makeup. About 170 KLD will be sent to Vesaka Pharma City. Parawada Anakapalle district of Andhra Pradesh. The EC condition quote as already committed by the project proponent JLD shall be ensured and no wastewater, no waste or treated water uh, shall be discharged outside the premises. Treated effluent shall be reused in the process utilities. Treated industrial effluent shall not be used for gardening, green belt development or horticultural purpose. Unquote. And it will be changed now to, quote, as already committed by the project proponent, JLD shall be ensured and no waste or treated water shall be discharged outside the premises. Treated effluent shall be reused in the utilities. Treated industrial effluent shall not be used for gardening, grill belt and horticultural purpose. So they have added the justification given was to maintain and achieve the stringent quality parameters as per export requirement and to avoid impurities impurities formation the treated wastewater of uh, 170 kld is not reused in the process however this raises questions number one whether the esc considered the impact of water environment due to this change why is such amendments soon after the grant of ec I am sure you the viewers also must be having a lot of questions. Please do share with us in the comment section. Next, the EAC recommended proposals of Indian Phosphate Limited, Asha Resins Private Limited, Diamines and Chemicals Limited, Vibrant uh, Pharmachem Li Private Limited, Arthi Industries Limited. The Expert Appraisal Committee deferred the project of Mega Agro International seeking EC for establishment of synthetic organic chemicals, APA manufacturing in, um, unit uh, of uh, production capacity 7 to 71.4 TPA at Sipkat Industrial Area Growth Center, uh, Gangai Kondan Village, Tirunelveli Taluk in District Tamil Nadu. Similarly, the EAC for Industry Sector 2 projects held a meeting on 16th March 2023 under the chairmanship of S.C. Mann, a former Haryana State Pollution Control Board officer. The EAC also, this industry two sector EAC also gave its nod to two amendment proposals. Crystal Balaji Industries Private Limited was granted EC dated 24th November 2021 for establishment of 200 kg grain based ethanol plant with 5 megawatt cogeneration of power at Begrajpur, Katoli, Paragana, Mujaffar Nagar district in Uttar Pradesh. The company now wants to change the boiler type to a waste to energy boiler in which RDF 530 MT per day. MT, I believe that it must be metric ton per day. NR SW 275 MT per day or biomass of 480 metric ton per day or any combination shall be used. The company gives a justification that quote, since the RDF and NRSW have some plastics and moisture content, therefore to use this fuel boiler shall be modified. Use of RDF and NRSW will be great help of the central government mantra of 3R and waste mission which emphasize reducing, reusing and recycling waste." Unquote. Now, though the EAC has not disclosed if there will be any further change in ground level concentrations with respect to any new air pollutants due to this change of boiler type, it is mandated that the company has to ensure that RDF used as fuel in the boiler shall not contain any form of chlorinated compounds such as PVC, etc. The EAC has decreed that ESP 5 field with a stack height of 72 meters will be installed with the boilers for controlling the particulate emissions within the statutory limits of 50 milligram per normal cubic meter. 
that is the standard. Concentration of SO2 and NOx emissions shall be less than 100 mg per Nm3. However, the condition performance assessment of pollution control devices or systems will be conducted annually seems to be against the existing half yearly compliance reporting requirement. Further, the EAC also deliberated the EC amendment application of MASH Biofuels Private Limited for its 360 KLD grain-based distillery plant along with 9 megawatt co-generation power plant near village Panimura Jungle in Tarva Block, Subarnapur District of Odisha. The proposal considered was referred back to the EAC by authority for deliberations on uses of coal, its impact and ash management plan proposed. Here also the EAC has enforced installation of uh, five field ESP with a stack height of 71 meters, one meter less here. So 71 meters with boilers of capacity, 75 TPH biomass or coal fired boiler uh, for controlling the power particulate emissions within the statutory limits of 50 mg per Nm3. SO2 and NOx emissions shall remain less than 100 mg per Nm3. However, the condition, the same problem here also, quote, performance assessment of pollution control devices or systems will be conducted annually, unquote, again seems to be against the half yearly compliance reporting requirement. So, there are two major questions. Why amendments so soon, first and foremost? Why the projects are not assessing the project feasibility before coming to the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change for their environmental clearance? Now, when they are coming for a change, for an amendment in the EC, the Ministry's ESCs are not deliberating on the subsequent impact of, I mean, they're generalizing a stack height raise or uh, some other conditions, but why don't they talk about the ground level concentration or the impacts, what is happening, what is going to happen, and what are the other relevant environmental impacts? Because raising the stack, whether raising the stack has an environmental impact or not, these things must be deliberated.